My name is Chris Anderson, and this is granite. It's an igneous rock, and it was formed when magma cooled inside a giant volcano. But I don't see any volcanoes. I'm in Acadia National Park, and all I see is the beautiful Atlantic coast of Maine. So how did a rock that formed inside a magma chamber get here? And what other rocks can we find? Let's learn today on Outsider Classroom. The geologic history of Acadia National Park is both legendary and explosive. 420 million years ago, this area was taking a geologic butt kicking. The North American and European tectonic plates began smashing into each other, and all that bumping and grinding generated a ton of pressure under the surface. Eventually, an underground chamber of magma formed, kind of like a really big, really hot zit in the Earth's crust. As the continents continued to push together, more magma filled the chamber, it got to untold amounts of pressure. And eventually, the magma chamber blew its top. That explosion caused a volcanic hole in the earth called a caldera nearly 10 miles wide. And today, you can stand right at the edge of that ancient caldera here in Acadia. Check out this formation. This is the Shatter Zone. The Shatter Zone. And it's the edge of the caldera. Here, you can see rock that was broken and blasted away when the caldera blew its top. These shards of rock are suspended in granite as the magma from the eruption cooled. This granite is a really awesome example of igneous rock, a type of rock that's formed when magma cools and crystallizes. And you can find that rock all over Acadia. In fact, when you're standing on Cadillac Mountain, known the world over for its granite formations, you're standing on a giant mass of cooled magma at the bottom of that ancient caldera. To help teach us more about the different types of rocks and how they form is my friend and structural geologist, Dr. Falarin Kolawole. Hey guys, my name is Dr. Falarin Kolawole, and I am a structural geologist at Columbia University. Sedimentary rocks is the rock type that forms due to the weathering and laying down of weathered materials um, in different layers. So metamorphic rocks form when um, sedimentary rocks that were laid down in layers at the Earth's surface or igneous rocks that either make it up to the surface as you know, volcanic igneous rocks or solidifies within the earth as intrusive igneous rocks. Um, when these two types of rocks are buried deep into the earth um, and are subjected to high temperatures and pressures, the minerals will change their form and um, they form what we call metamorphic rocks. So plate tectonics is the grand process that actually drives the cycling of earth's rocks from sedimentary rocks to um, um, igneous rocks and to metamorphic rocks. Um, the, this process primarily involves um, the burial or exposure of rocks. So if, while sedimentary rocks are um, laid down at the surface, you need to bury them deep down to subject them to metamorphism and to melting to create magma, right? And after igneous rocks have been formed within the earth, say by through, um, as intrusions or um, during metamorphism, if tectonic forces bring those rocks up to the surface, they get subjected to weathering processes, like you know from um, um, rainfalls and from heating and cooling due to different seasons. Um, this makes the rocks that have been exposed at the surface break down um, in the process called the weathering and they get washed down through rivers and glaciers and wind 
and they get deposited within basins in layers. This is a really good uh, place to look at rock cycling simply because we are within a mountain, an area where rocks that were buried deep down has been brought up to the surface. And if you look at these rocks, you would see evidence that suggests that they've been subjected to high pressure and temperatures. You can see the minerals in this rock. So these are gneisses. Um, and you can see that they've been subjected to um, high pressures and temperatures because the minerals are lined um, really well. Check out this rock. It's mudstone and it's a sedimentary rock. It was formed on a seafloor 470 million years ago. Now, check out this rock. It used to be mudstone, but got transformed into schist, a metamorphic rock. Back when the tectonic plates were converging here, they exerted a ton of heat and pressure on this rock, turning it from mudstone into schist. New rock, new properties. And check out the lines here. All these waves are a sign of the immense forces that were at work here. Eventually, this rock will be weathered, eroded, and deposited somewhere else as a sedimentary rock. Or it'll find its way below the Earth's surface, melt, and cool into an igneous rock. Guess that's why they call it the rock cycle. Hey, the only thing that's better than the Earth recycling rocks is me recycling geology puns. By knowing what type of rock you're looking at, you can really understand a lot about what was happening on Earth when that rock was formed. Igneous rocks are formed when magma is cooled. Sedimentary rocks are formed by sediments like sand or mud or corals. And metamorphic rocks are formed when the other two types of rocks are subject to really intense heat and pressure. Rocks really are the best evidence we have for understanding our planet's history. And we should never take them for granted. Okay, okay, I'll stop talking. <laughs> hey, I love a good geology pun. We all have our faults. Okay, I'm done. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.